Hey everyone, this is Chris with the Ancient Scholar. How you guys doing? I'm going to take you through another video here real quick. And uh, this is going to be a follow-up to all the hemodynamics videos I did some years ago. And this is actually what I would like to do is take you through setting up uh, a hemodynamic or an invasive line. So I have simulated an invasive line here. I have placed an uh, intravenous catheter in an in a IV mannequin. And uh, this will actually provide a reasonable enough pressure that will get some sort of pressure reading on a monitor, some sort of waveform, and that's really all we're looking for, is to, to actually see how the whole setup process works. So to set things up, you're going to need a monitor that can actually do invasive monitoring. This happens to be a, a critical care transport monitor, and I have two ports for plugging invasive lines in. In addition to that, you're going to need a cable for the whatever monitor you're using. And the cable, there are two common adapters. There is this little square adapter here, and this little square adapter is called a transpack cable. There's also another kind of adapter as well. It's kind of an oval-shaped adapter. I don't actually have a cable for that. Um, so you have kind of a square and an oval invasive line setup. And here is a just a basic invasive line setup. It has a little oval thing there, you can see. Um, we won't actually be able to use this one today, however. So what I have is I actually have a transpack monitoring kit. This is an invasive line kit here that I'll be using. And the invasive line kit contains tubing that has what's known as a transducer. So I'll just go ahead and take this tubing out and show you guys real quick. So here's my tubing, and you'll notice a couple of things, or you, it's really hard to tell in the video, unfortunately, but this tubing is very stiff. It's very stiff, and it is very low compliance. It's non-compliant tubing, and you want that stiff kind of tubing when you're transducing, because you don't want tubing that has a whole lot of give, or you can get some damping of, of the waveform that occurs there. Um, so you generally want to hook this tubing directly up to whatever invasive catheter you have in place. So today I think we'll just simulate a, uh, a um, central venous uh, line, or central venous catheter. Okay, so I have the transducer right here, and the transducer is actually what transduces the pressure signal, so you get a pressure wave, okay, that comes through the tubing and hits this transducer, and that pressure wave is then turned into an electrical signal that travels through this into the cable into the monitor and then the monitor interprets uh, the signal that it's getting. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and set our tubing up. We're going to want to go back for this. We're going to want to go ahead and get our invasive tubing set up here. So the invasive tubing you're going to need okay, an IV bag. Some people will some people tend to use like a heparinized solution um, we typically use, just use normal saline. This is actually lactated ringers. That's a, um, just a little, um, that's still in date, but we're going to go ahead and use it anyway because it's just for uh, simulation purposes. So um, It's similar to spiking an IV catheter. However, the big difference is you don't want any bubbles in your line. If you get any bubbles, you're going to get damping. So I'm going to show you kind of a, a slightly different way of, of setting up your line that tends to work real well because this drip chamber here, unlike an IV catheter, you don't want any air in this drip chamber. You want a completely filled drip chamber because particularly during transport when this stuff gets thrown around, if it ever gets inverted and you get air in your tubing, it just causes lots of, of, of trouble with, with damping. So this is a technique that um, I've learned that tends to work really well. As I'll go ahead and spike the tubing like so, all right, and then I have all my tubing here. Let's just check my um, stopcocks and make sure that all of the um, other ports are off so I get flow through all these little guys here. All right, so I've got two stopcocks on this. All right, so the port, the, that port's off, and that port's off, so the tubing is now open. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and fill the drip chamber backwards. And what that, that kind of that, that back fill is going to do, if you will, and let, let's do this actually while we're at it. Um, I'll try to take all the air out of my IV bag as well. See how I'm just kind of flushing all the air out of it, like so. 
or about as much air as I can possibly get out of it. And then I'll go ahead and spike it there. All right. All right, so then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill this kind of backwards like so. And I'll show you why, because when I fill it backwards, you don't have to, when I backfill that guy, it'll kind of ensure that I'm not getting any air in the, in the tubing. And I just want this little guy completely filled up. I'll go ahead and open this guy up too while we're at it. And generally what you're gonna to have to do is as, as you're filling this, you're probably gonna to wanna to flush it a little bit as well because you're gonna get some air in uh, during the initial uh, flush and fill. So now what I'm gonna to do to actually get my tubing flushed is um, the, the transducer opens at about 300 millimeters of mercury of, of pressure. Um, so it's really hard to, to actually get this thing to flow. But you see these little wings here, I can push those little wings and that opens the system up. And so when I push those wings, that allows me to open this up and you can see that this is filling up in here. And let's see if we can get this little guy to fill up even more. I said I really don't like having this thing completely. Um, see how it's halfway full like that? Let's just go ahead and fill that guy all the way up. And this happens to be a 60 drop tubing, so it's a little bit more inconvenient, I suppose, um, to use. So I'm just gonna fill it all the way up, as much as it'll possibly let me. All right, we still have a little bit there. That's all right. All right, there we go. So I'll go ahead and squeeze my wings, put this right in here, and then we'll just go ahead and flush this through here. See how I'm getting some air bubbles, that's okay. That really does ensure, let's just squeeze that air out while we're at it here. All right, flushing, see how I'm flushing all my air bubbles through? It's flushing the tubing. I'm just gonna flush it, flush it, flush it, flush it real good. All right, as best I can here. All right, that's looking pretty good there. A little air bu bubble and tubing there, but I'll just continue flushing here. <clears throat> all right, got some air going through the transducer. We'll flush all that stuff through as well. Okay, it's looking good. So once we get all the air bubbles out of the tubing and we flush the tubing completely, okay, and we have it reasonably full here, I'll just hang this up like so. And I've flushed about as much air as I possibly can out of that. And then one thing I like to do is with this transpack tubing at least, the um, caps that are on the two stopcocks, the caps are actually vented, and so dirt and debris and stuff can get into those caps, but they actually give you a little pack that contains these little caps here, and these yellow caps are non-vented, so they don't have a hole that goes all the way through them. So what you can do is you can replace the white caps with the yellow caps and that for me is just a, a little safer particularly during transport you don't want stuff getting into those caps compromising the integrity of your system particularly when it comes to you know, infection control and air and, and uh, dust and debris and whatnot okay so I've done all that looking at my line uh, looks like my line is completely flushed I don't see any air bubbles and uh, we're good to go here so I'll just keep the line in here. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and go to the monitor over here. And I'll just turn my monitor on. All right. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my cable, okay? I'm gonna have a cable that's gonna plug into the monitor here. Let me pull back. All right, so the cable's gone into the monitor here. And then this end is what's gonna hook into my invasive line, right? This is the other line here, we don't want that. Right here, and the transpack kind of has a little arrow um, on the line there, and you just kind of line the little arrow here, little arrow up, it clicks into place, and we're good to go. Now, the monitor is recognizing that I have something hooked up. So what I'm gonna need to do is I'm going to need to get the transducer level. Remember, we need the transducer at the level of the phlebostatic axis. Um, if you're in an ICU, you're going to want this leveled out probably on an IV pole or something like that. 
In the transport environment, we will typically tape the transducer to the chest wall and level it at the flebostatic axis. Um, it's just a little easier for us. Either way, um, we're not going to actually do that here today, but I at least wanted to mention that. Okay, so what do we need to do now? Well, what we need to do now is we need to have our system to pressure. And this isn't actually kosher putting a blood pressure cuff around the bag. You'd actually want to put a proper pressure bag around um, your IV solution that surrounds it. And then you, you pump it up and it has a little indicator that pops out, generally a green color when you're at 300 millimeters of mercury. Um, but that's okay. We're just going to kind of simulate putting a pressure bag on today. And you need to put it at about 300 millimeters of mercury. And what that does is that 300 millimeters of mercury is enough to open the little transducer. The transducer opens up and that's enough to keep the system open and communicating. And it, 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 you actually have a constant flow going through this about one to three milliliters per hour. Very, very, very slow. Um, but that's how it works nonetheless. Okay, so now I've hooked everything up. So what am I going to do? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and zero my transducer to room air first, okay? So what I want to do is I've got my stopcock here. I'm going to go into my monitor, and you can come in a little bit if you want. And first of all, I'm going to set my monitor up, okay? So in this particular monitor, I'm just going to hit parameters, and I'm going to go down to IBP. That stands for invasive blood pressure. I'm going to hit enter. First of all, I'm going to label it, and I'm using P1. So P1 is going to be my um, invasive pressure 1. So let's go ahead and label that, and we want to make that a CVP, enter. And then my range, okay, I'm going to set the range, and that's a pressure, pressure range that it's going to measure. So let's do CVP range. See how it's set between 0 and 300? That's pretty significant pressure range for a CVP. So let's go ahead and get that down a little lower here. Um, you know, zero to 30 on, on a regular you know person, but you know, we'll go zero to 60 here because I don't know how much pressure is in the IV arm when, it, when I get it running, I'll hit enter. Okay, now what I need to do is I need to zero the transducer to room air. Okay, so I'm gonna go to the stopcock at the level of the transducer. And remember the stock cop, wherever the little arrow is, is off. So right now the port that goes out this way is off. So what I need to do is I need to turn the patient end of the transducer off, like so, okay? And then I'll unscrew this, and what is going on is the transducer is now able to communicate with room air, okay? So when I zero, it is going to be zeroing atmospheric pressure. So I'll hit zero here. 0 CVP, okay, it's going to go through it, and it'll tell me P10, and then I will take my cap, put my cap back on, I'll take the, uh, the stopcock and move this to the off position so now the transducer's on and open to the patient, okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to attach our, our um, invasive line, distal end of the invasive line, I'm going to attach it to of, of my monitoring line, excuse me, I'm going to attach it to uh, the distal end of my invasive line here. In this case, it's just a peripheral IV that I've, I've placed on a mannequin, but um, it should give us some pressure. So we'll go ahead and attach that. And let's get his circulatory system running here. And that should give us some sort of pressure going through there. All right. Let's do this one instead. This one's a little has a little more stuff in it. I'll set you there. And you here. Open you up. There we go. And we've got blood flowing through our circulatory system. So let's now go to our monitor here. And then what I want to do is I want to go ahead and hit return. And I want to select traces. And I want to set trace two here. So I'm going to select trace two. And I'm going to make trace two my central venous pressure. And there you go. You guys can see that I have a waveform that is popped up here. And I have my actual CVP. Now, clearly, this is a very high CVP for um, a normal, healthy person. But again, what it is transducing is it's transducing the pressure 
in this particular circulatory system as it circulates through. So um, we're getting a, a waveform. We're getting our, our CVP, and what I can do to make to visualize this waveform even a little better is um, I can go ahead and hit parameters, and I can go to the IBP, my range. I'll select CVP range again, and I'll just narrow that, make it 0 to 30. But in this case, what happened was because my CVP is running at 32, it maxes out at 30. So unfortunately... I'm going to have to go back, hit CVP range, enter, and make that 0 to 60 because the, 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 uh, the average pressure is right there around 30 with just a little bit of variation there. And so then now what I can do is I can check for um, my damping by doing what's called a fast flush procedure. And what that entails is actually squeezing these little wings. And when I squeeze these wings, it allows a flush of fluid to go through the system, and that'll help me check for damping. So when I do my fast flush, come to the monitor here, and I squeeze this, you should see the monitor spike up. Let's see what happens. So you see how I got that big spike there. Now, what I should normally see is it should take about two bounces to return to baseline. So I'll, I'll flush that again. And you see how it returns the baseline, and it's only doing it in about one one little bounce there. Um, that means that I probably have a little too much pressure in my bag, and I should see like one, eh, about two, maybe three bounces, bounce, bounce, and then it returns to baseline. Um, less than that, you may have overpressurized system. Um, if it takes multiple bounces, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, that may mean that there's low pressure in the system or there's a kink or there's an air bubble or something is going on to cause um, some damping in your system. Okay, guys, uh, that's all I have for you. That's uh, just a basic setup of, a, of invasive uh, monitoring, and hopefully you found this video helpful. And as always, thanks for hanging in there.